Welcome to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and today we're going to be talking about four tips for caregivers of a person living with Alzheimer's disease. And this is part one of a two-part series. And I'm joined by Shimoda Emanuel, who is the author of Sacred Stitches, The Art of Caregiving. So welcome, Shimoda. How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm great. So before we begin, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up writing Sacred Stitches. Sure. I'm Shimoda. My business is Shimoda Accessories. I create jewelry and fiber art for the soul. My mother first started me off in, in, with art, my parents really, because they were both artists. And how I started with the book is that my sister was taking care of my mom and I would, you know, help her out from time to time, go out there and, or bring mom here to stay with me, give my sister a break. But then notice that my sister, her memory started going and then she had gotten breast cancer. So I took mom and mom was living with me. And what's really great is that mom married. So my husband helped out, helped out a lot. So that was really great. So that's how she uh, got to me. But now I am also dealing with her and my sister. And that was, that was really hard in terms, because I had to take my sister to her chemo and radiation treatments and then deal with my mom. And so I was just scattered all over the place. So I was writing down things that I was doing and I journal anyway. So I would write things down that would help me because I knew other people was going through the same thing. So I kept a journal about things that helped me. And his mom was uh, funny and I would catch her at certain moments when she would be in the kitchen doing certain things and she loved staying in the kitchen. So I created this little toy box for her and just put just stuffed things, some um, game pieces, puzzles, books, and put that in there. And she loved going in there and taking things out. So, so I just kept photographs and journal about that. Okay. So Sacred Stitches is basically kind of a story of kind of your journey as a family caregiver, primarily for your mother living with Alzheimer's disease. And so what are, we're going to talk about four things that you learned. So maybe we'll start off with how important time management and a morning ritual are. So since I'm an artist, I've been working at home. So that was really great that I'm able to work at home and take care of mom. So, but having her here, I got, I just couldn't figure out my rhythm anymore because I being by myself, I had my rhythm down. I was able to do what I needed to do. But now that mom is here, getting her up, having to eat, dress her, either doing all that stuff. I didn't know when I can do what I needed to do for my business. So it took a while, it took months actually for me to realize, okay, what do I need to do? I realized she sleeps late. So that was great. She would sleep till like one o'clock p.m. So then I would get up early, six o'clock in the morning and do my work, my art, computer work, phone, everything. Then once I get her up, then I would uh, deal with her for the rest of the day. So morning rituals are really great. Even if you're a person, your loved one doesn't sleep till one o'clock. I would say first thing I would get up, I would journal. First, I would meditate. Even I meditate for five minutes. Usually I do 15 minutes, but even five minutes just to get centered. Then journal. I always keep a journal by my bed and I would just write down whatever I need to write. And then I would um, maybe read a little and get up and drink some water. So that's like sacred time. Mm -hmm. Time for yourself. Yes, yes. It's so important because then you might, once you get up, you might not have that time. You probably won't have that time. Right. Yeah. And as a caregiver, it is important to remember that if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of other people. Exactly. Exactly. You want to be strong for yourself and for them. Right. And, and actually getting into that rhythm, I can remember when I had my first child, like I could not get out of the house before noon. And I was like, what is going on? Like I used to be able to <laughs> organize things and, and every, and I, I can't leave the house before noon. 
you know, and so anytime there's a major life change, I think that's a normal thing for people to expect and to just let it evolve. Because when the second kid came along, boy, we were out the door at seven o'clock because at that point I kind of, yeah, add one more, not a problem. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So. You got into the flow. It took me a while to get in the flow. Yeah. Right. So time for self, figuring out the routine that's going to work for both of you. And, you know, as a caregiver, you have to balance work you know, and caregiving tasks. And so that's, right. that's normal. So maybe tell us a little bit now about kind of what you learned about the power of smell. Okay. So I love incense and smells and soaps. So, so since this is a stressful situation, taking care of somebody, it can be stressful. There's certain oils that are good for that. So like lavender, lemon oil, uh, even cutting, slicing a lemon and just smelling it would help a lot. Um, even though I have a diffuser that I use to put those oils in. And I even went with, with my mom, like an area that my mom is in. And uh, it helps calm her down also. And also, right. if you want to the energy, lemon is good for that also. Lemon, basil, and rosemary is good. And sometimes right. I make basil tea, which is really great. Yeah. So, so and I was telling you, yeah, I was telling you that you know, since my kids were little, I always sprayed their bed linens with you know lavender chamomile sprays. You know, and we've right. always done the essential oils. Of course, my brother picks on me because he's always like, you know, well, I need to go get some of those. And I'm like, why? He goes, well, they're essential. I'm like, well, they are, they are essential, <laughs> yes, <they> are. <laughs> you know, but it also can trigger relaxation. So if you associate, you know, a certain smell with relaxation, whatever works for you, whatever sense you like, right. you know, they can be helpful for you to calm and center you as a caregiver, but they can also, like you said, have a calming effect within the home and on other people too. I think yes. cookies are a good smell. Oh, Yes. Popcorn too. <laughs> yeah. And also, and actually to increase mealtimes, just because this is what I do, you know, we actually encourage families to be sure that they bring their loved one into the kitchen so they can smell and see and hear all of the aspects of preparing a meal because yes. it, it's, those are all cues that it's, we're soon going to eat. You know, in a nursing home, that's um, really hard to do. They kind of put the kitchen in the back of the building and then they just kind of run through with this big cart. And it's like, you know, they're just natural cues that we need to have as human beings. Um, so the greenhouse model is totally different. Family yeah. style dining. And they, you know, this kitchen is in the center of, of that model of care. Right. And, and, and my like, mother loves to eat. She would eat right. all the time. And she, like I said, she likes to be in the kitchen. So it's anytime, anytime is the time to eat for her. Right. And this is a, actually a perfect segue um, into how food can affect moods and how you and kind of your journey with that but my mom's always told me like the most important room in any home is the kitchen so yes. so tell us a little bit about what you learned about mood and yes. food so mood being aware of how food affects you so I know for me during when summer comes I want salad I want to eat a lot of salad so that's something that I know about myself and then when fall into winter comes is soups. Like my body is craving soup. So what is your being aware of what your body craves? And with my mom, and usually I'm a healthy eater. So that means she's got to be a healthy eater. And right. uh, my mother used to have pain in her hip. And sometimes she would be fine. She would walk perfectly. And then the next minute she'll be bent over and could hardly move. And I would try to sit it down. Okay, mom, sit down, sit down. And I would put some cream on her. And, um, and then she would sit, she would stand back up. Even though she's still in pain, she still want to stand up and walk. So I was trying to figure out what is it that's causing this? So my girlfriend came over and, you know, she sees what I feed her and everything. And so she said, you know what? Sugar might be uh, causing the pain, her hip pain. So, and my mother loves sugar, loves sweets. And so I eliminated sugar from everything. And so I didn't give her the yogurt anymore. And I would make these nutritious shakes, which were really good. And I used to put a lot of, not sugar, because I never really used sugar, but raisins and dates in it to sweeten it. Mm -hmm. And I switched that to, um, what's that sweetener? Now, stevia, stevia or, or uh, monk fruit. Is a sweetener okay. too. 
natural sweetener. So I eliminated the sugar and then after a while, no more pain, no more pain. So mm -hmm. then somebody gave her something, maybe it was a piece of cake or what have you. And then the next day she was in pain again. So I just didn't give her anything else with sugar. And right. juice, not, not juice has a lot of sugar in it. So I didn't give her a juice anymore. Right. And, it, and it's mostly the refined sugars that yeah. are the culprit in that. And then the other thing I was going to say, I think one of the things that you mentioned was, you know, liking to have soup in the fall. And I do think, you know, a crock pot and, you know, things that you can kind of either, or like a Dutch oven, you know, anything that you have on the stove or can kind of automate, is also going to help with time management. And so I know like as a mom, you know, I would always put stuff in the crock pot in the morning. So that at the end of the day, we would have a hot meal instead of you know coming in the back door and being like, okay, now we're, what are we going to eat? So it takes a little bit of forward thinking, but exactly. I do think that that's another um, way to help with time management um, exactly. as well. Exactly. And I got to use the crock pot because I've never used one before, but that would be good for soups. And also yes. another thing I noticed is that uh, with me, since I was working before getting her up, I got to watch what I eat. Cause I know for me, sugar makes me sleepy. So if I have like one day I wanted some pancakes, I had some pancakes and syrup and then my energy doo, went down. It's like, oh my God, I completely forgot. And it's really hard to get myself back, you know, revved up so I can get, you know, my work done. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was a perfect segue into your fourth point, which is the importance of sleep. So sleep. tell me what you learned about sleep. <laughs> okay, sleep. My mother would sometimes uh, wake up in the middle of the night. I had her sleeping in the living room. I live in a duplex. So my bedroom, our bedroom is upstairs and she sleeps in the living room. And uh, so sometimes I would hear, you know, some movement. So I would go downstairs, check on her, and she's up walking around, and you know, I put her back to bed. She's, she's usually in the kitchen. <laughs> right. Lights out, but digging in her toy box in the kitchen. Right. And one night I woke up smelling gas. And mm -hmm. so I went downstairs and she had the gas on, and she's like walking out the kitchen, like happy go lucky. So the next day, I immediately went on Amazon and found it, did something for children to keep the children from playing with the knobs. So I ordered right. that. So that helped out. So with sleep, what I give her is sometimes, and my mother doesn't take any medication. So this is something you might have to check with your doctor, but have um, melatonin, the tincture, because they have melatonin in pill form. I give her the tincture. I just mix it in with some water and uh, have her drink that like a half an hour before I put her to bed. And like within a half an hour, she's sleepy and easily put her to bed. And usually she sleeps throughout the night. Also, I give her, and this one, this I got from my niece who has two rambunctious kids. And uh, she says she gives some, mel um, not melatonin, she gives some calcium magnesium powder. It's like a raspberry flavor. And so she tells them at night, like, okay, it's time for your soda and uh, gives it to them. And she says that like knocks them out. So sometimes I'll give my mother that and that usually knocks her out also. So that's um, my recommendation on sleep. And also I have a cousin who's two cousins dealing with their mom. And so she, she sometimes gets up throughout the night and they have to get up and she's trying to go outside and it was just really hard on them. So I also told them they need to get this and they said that it has helped. Right, and that's actually a safer alternative than using like Benadryl PM or Tylenol, Benadryl or Tylenol PM because the Benadryl uh, actually increases a person's risk for falling if you're over 65 and taking that. So it is better to use like a chamomile tea you know, right. or um, the melatonin that you're, you you mentioned, just because that's just a safer alternative. Yeah. So yeah. wanted to share um, your Sacred Stitches book, and we're going to come back and talk about part two and some other tips that you have for caregivers. So how could people get in touch with you and find find your book and okay. your cards? Yes, my cards, my um, Sacred Stitches cards, I got them right here. 
and you could pick a card for the day. You got joy. joy. Mine today was peace. So the cards have my and my mother's artwork on there, and it's on one word, and you just pick a card for the day, and you focus on what that word is for you for the day. So you just you happened know. to pull focus when you said focus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so they can reach me at saharlem.com, S for Shimoda, A for accessories, Harlem. I live in Harlem, New York. So saharlem.com. And you can buy the book, the cars, my jewelry, fiber art. And uh, if you want to see me on Instagram, you can uh, go to Shimoda Accessories. Uh, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook, Shimoda Accessories. And you'll okay. have to look at it. Yes, we're going to put all the links on my website, melissabphd.com. And so thank you so much for being with us today and uh, tune back in to part two. So, thank you. All right, we'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor. And if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my other episodes on my YouTube channel by either by subscribing and ringing the bell to get immediate notifications when new content comes out. In addition, you can also find the audio version of the podcast on Amazon Music, Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher. Please feel free to leave an honest review because more reviews mean more awareness of the podcast and helps us move towards an age-friendly world. If you have a comment or a question, you can visit my website, melissabphd.com. Go to the Contact Melissa tab, and you can leave me a voice message. You never know. It might just include your question or your comment in an upcoming episode.